Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, on this episode of The Bullet Points, we are going to do a post-election night wrap-up. Now, there's still votes being tallied in a lot of states, a lot of races. We've got the House, we've got the Senate, we've got all sorts of ballot measures. I'm going to give you the nitty-gritty, the down and dirty of where we ended up, because quite frankly, there was no red tsunami, there was no red wave, and there's lots of stuff to break down and digest further, because we still got some things to march forward with our gun rights as we continue on this quest of passing it on to the next generation. As I mentioned, I'm going to do a real quick overview and then we're going to do some more stuff and subsequent videos today and uh, going forward. But this recap is brought to you by Established Titles. I'm going to say a quick word for them and then we're going to get into it to show you what you need to know for today. The Established Title Packs give you one square foot of dedicated land in an estate in Eddleston, Scotland, along with a certified crest like you see right here. This is based on a historic Scottish custom, which will allow landowners to become lords or ladies, and if you act now, you can be in the LOA little plot so we can have our own little fiefdom. This is a fun and novel way to preserve the woodlands of Scotland. They work with global charities, One Tree Planted, and Trees for Our Future to support global reforestation efforts. You could officially change your name to lord or lady and get it on your plane tickets and also on your credit cards. This makes a great last minute gift and they have couple packs which you can get adjoining plots of land together. In order to give the ultimate conversation piece for that special someone, Established Titles is running a massive sale right now. Plus, if you use the code Langley, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Langley to support the channel now. All right, my brothers and sisters, as I mentioned in the introduction, nothing really materialized as was projected in the polling. Honest to God, it did not come out like a lot of us thought. Even the Democrats in the media were surprised. Even the Democrats in the Democratic Party were surprised. Every single person was expecting a referendum across the board in both the Senate and the House races. Now, just to set the table and the expectations of where we were going into the election last night when we were on the live stream, roughly about 53, 54 that was the kind of the consensus in the Senate seats that were going to go Republican. My own personal bet was 52 to 53. I even said it on that live stream. The House was going to flip by a larger, a larger margin. Then we had to look at the ballot measures in Iowa and then also in Oregon. These are all gun ballot measures. There was lots of stuff going on. I'm going to break you down kind of the high level. Obviously, the really big loss last night for the Republican side of the ticket was Oz losing to Fetterman. That boggles my mind. In fact, on the live stream, I was actually at a loss for words at about 1 a.m. for a hot minute. But let's kind of go down what exactly happened through the night, and then we'll kind of break it down a little bit further. So earlier in the night, we started talking about the things that we needed ex expected to see if it was going to be a red wave or a red tsunami. Earlier on, Hochul started kind of winning. That was kind of annoying, but we kind of expected that. Then we started seeing De uh, Hassan in the Senate race in New Hampshire also kind of hold their own and then eventually win. The Virginia House districts that we were expecting would be indicative of a red wave. There were three of them. Republicans won one and the Democrats won two. Now where that leaves the Virginia race is nothing really changed. In fact, if it had been three, that would have been indicative of a big wave going in the way of the Republicans. But because it was only 30%, that kind of correlated and set the tone for the rest of the night. Walker versus Warnock started to come in, and as we started to see the tallying, it looked like it was seesawing back and forth, back and forth, and eventually it's going to end up in a runoff going into Georgia, usually December 6th, December 7th, in that, in that realm. I don't know the exact date yet. But at the high level, the House, the expectations did not come through as they expected. In fact, on our live stream, Real Clear Politics was upgrading and downgrading the Republican odds of winning significantly in the House. Currently, the way that it sits is the House is slated to be going to the Republicans by about 220 to 225 votes. Now, that's above the 218 margin, but it is nowhere near the red wave that is expected. Again, this is all pending, and I'll keep you updated, so make sure you subscribe. As we go into the Senate races, you're starting to talk about a few different things here, because the Senate races, the Oz Fetterman was kind of indicative. When Fetterman won, that took the wind out of the entire sails of the Republican push to take back the Senate. Georgia is now a runoff. Wisconsin is closer than we expected it to be. Johnson, the Republican, is still winning, but it is closer than expected. One of the bright spots in the Senate was J.D. Vance pulled down a victory by the expected margins in the actual polling that was before the election as well. So Ohio is a lock. North Carolina is a lock. Wisconsin is pending. Georgia is in a runoff. Um, Oz lost to Fetterman in Pennsylvania, which then takes us to the West. 
This is where it gets really interesting because you've got Adam Laxalt in Nevada, who currently, as of the results this morning, is neck and neck in a ahead by like a point and a half or a point. And then you've got Arizona with Blake Masters in the Senate versus Mark Kelly. Again, that's a little bit larger of a margin. The votes are still coming in and we're going to see what happens. But that's kind of the initial shock points that we hit last night. If you're looking at the actual odds of taking the Senate, it's still a toss up. It depends how this shakes out. And like I said, I'll do more detail on this in a subsequent video. This is just kind of the recap. But it's looking like in a best case scenario, 52 Republican, 48 um, Democrat. In a worst case scenario, 41 Democrat, 49 Republican. I personally think it's going to end up around 51, 49 Republican because of Nevada. Don't quote me on that. That's just my own thoughts, but it, anything could change. Now, if we go back to the ballot measures, I'm going to kind of run down the gun uh, ballot measures that were a win and, a, and kind of still waiting. So in Iowa, there was a Second Amendment preservation amendment adding into the Constitution. That passed. That is it. Iowa, congratulations. You now have an amendment to your Constitution, which further protects the Second Amendment rights of your state. That's on a state level. That one was a lock. That was a very good win. Oregon, measure 114. This is the gun control um, proposals put forward. Currently, it is losing at like 51% of the, with 75% of the vote coming in. As of this moment, Oregon is not passing the gun um, registration, gun fees, and the gun control measure 114. That can change. Don't hold me to it. I'll keep you updated. But as we sit right now, the Republicans are slated to get, like I said, a slim majority in the House. Then they are questionable on the Senate. Overall, extremely lackluster performance from the Republicans. We're going to break down even further as we go forward. I'm sure you're going to hear a lot of it. What went wrong, where it didn't materialize, what was the actual catalyst for the failure. But that is the early morning nitty gritty. And hopefully that sets you up for a little bit of the information as we go forward on what you missed. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you on the next videos. I'm Braden. See you later.